welcome everyone and uh, as other folks come in again, this is being recorded and shall be archived and put on the visas voices. Site and welcome to game on playing for keeps with volunteers. Game on, uh, game on. Todd and I are here. Uh, you've got my video. We might get Todd's video at some point, but we've got his uh, adorable icon in the meantime. And what we're talking about today is gamification of. Community engagement, volunteer engagement in particular, and gamification, if you haven't heard that term before, it's used primarily in game design, and it's uh, this idea that's been rapidly happening in the last 10, 15 years where gamification uses game design elements outside of video or board games themselves. And gamification of volunteer roles and tasks has already been happening. So today we're kind of um, helping you either build on what you're already doing. You may not realize you're already incorporating gamification and funification and friendly competition into your volunteer recognition or tasks or projects themselves so that you can, uh, and if you haven't heard of this before and you don't think you're doing any of it, you as a leader of volunteers can understand and enjoy the ride that gamification is and kind of catch this cool wave and of change and not be left behind kind of sputtering and confused like why is why is there this this group's engagement working better than mine so this should be a lot of uh, fun stuff to cover and uh, Todd off screen is going to introduce uh, me and then I'm going to introduce Todd and you can use your imagination with him yeah, sorry about that, folks. Uh, all the technology is working this morning except for my camera, which seems to work when I go through the setup process, but not when I want to broadcast. So you've all been saved this morning, which is great. Oh, look, you can't see my funny, silly hat that everybody could see last week. And just to, just imagine, imagine it. Just imagine yeah. Todd with a funny, I was dressed up like thing one from the cat in the hat. Yep. And so they, like, everybody imagine the cat in the hat as you look at me. But Dana is much more important than I am. She has been involved with all volunteerism forever. Um, actually, I think we both have. It's kind of scary. Uh, she's definitely, as you can see here, she's globally recognized as an advisor, speaker, and advocate. I've known her for many years, and I think my favorite story, I always tell this one, and we may yet have to be reduced to this uh, just for the fun of it, is that she was giving a presentation several years ago, a workshop at the Points of Life Foundation conference, and there was a big band playing on the other partition, the partition next to her, and nobody could hear inside of her workshop. And so to solve the problem, Dana jumps up on tables and karaoke's well sings, okay, the entire script of her presentation. And it worked great. So, yeah. you know, definitely a fun person. She's got a lot of background in acting and singing and obviously volunteerism. So we're really glad to have her. If you haven't checked out her priceless advice series, please do. Links up on the voices page. Thank you, Todd, for that fantastic introduction uh, slash blackmail material. Um, yes, I, definitely. Uh, I've known Todd again, the 15, they're probably pushing at least 10 years, probably 15. And Todd's whole life, including his education, has been in nonprofit management and advisement. And he's a co founder of a United Way chapter, local volunteer center, and volunteer management software company, Disaster Help Network, Congress of uh, Volunteer Association Administrators, uh, AVA, which uh, morphed uh, 10, 12, 12 ish years ago into the Association of Leaders in Volunteer Engagement. Um, so we've both been involved with our, our national uh, organizations and local organizations and Todd's particular uh, specialty and a lot of his work has been around uh, homelessness and that kind of community service. And we have done this presentation. We, we uh, put this together a few years ago and we update it all the time. So really happy together to uh, share. And Todd uh, doesn't have any embarrassing uh, or funny uh, acting weird stories that I've oh, I just haven't shared uh, that I've witnessed or shared, but <laughs> you can bribe him with chocolate. So now that you know our deepest, darkest secrets, uh, let's get into the uh, funification. And we're starting with asking you just to kind of see, like, what have you done games or com friendly competitions or gamification um, while volunteering or running volunteer programs? So either as a volunteer yourself or no, we better tell you that in the lower right hand corner of yes. your screen, you should There's see a, a little slide Slido menu. And if you yeah. open that, you're going to see some questions, a question that says, what games have you engaged in while volunteering? Or at least you should. Yes, I see. Uh, do, 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 do. And you can check your thing and hit send. 
So I'll give it a few minutes to there do that. One, yeah, one of my favorite um, ways that I was doing gamification with a zoo I worked for, and I didn't even realize it was gamification uh, at the time, because this is about 10-ish uh, years ago, so it was a very new idea, is we had the Good Egg Award. So certain volunteers who kind of went a, a, above and beyond got an ostrich egg that was blown out, dried out, all clean, and uh, decorated with some beautiful art, sometimes painting, sometimes engraving. And we decided that it was extra, extra fun if we had a little competition of who was uh, uh, doing the art on the eggs. And so we had people of all ages, from junior zookeepers in you know middle schools, teenagers, to totally grown up career artists, uh, docents and volunteers who happened to be extremely talented. And it was fun to see that whole range and then um, give out those those art eggs to different folks as they go along. But leaderboards, team competitions, redeemables, badges, challenge boards have become much more common the last few years. So it looks like we're getting some pretty good answers, pretty even uh, on that I'm seeing. If uh, Todd and Lisa, you're seeing the results too, of leaderboards, team competitions, and redeemables. So that's pretty interesting to know. Is everybody, we're only getting three out of the 13 of you who have started responding. So if you can't find that little panel in the lower right-hand corner, it says Slido on it. Super easy now to respond to us so that we so we know how to cater this presentation. Otherwise, we're going to go off on something you all already know. Quite possibly. And you can also answer in the chat. If Slido's being, giving you gremlins or being weird, uh, feel free to answer in the chat on what you are doing. And the, uh, as the slides go on, the Slido should stay up on the right hand side. Um, and Linda says, yeah, Slido is not behaving for you. That's OK. Uh, and we can also uh, open up mics and talk about it because we'll have plenty of time to talk about these things, too. But we just wanted to kind of take the temperature of the room and uh, see what was going on. Um, so, Lisa, if you want to. Please advance to the next slide. So this is what, oh, what'd you say? I was binging for you. Hey, oh, Bing. thank you. Like. <laughs> uh, Todd's doing sound effects and uh, Foley sound design. So I appreciate that that today. Uh, so here's here's what you're getting out of today. Uh, learning objectives, not just uh, imagining Todd's funny hats, but really how to apply game theory to your roles, your recruitment, your retention, and really incorporate these aspects of Playful, and that's the key word is playful and friendly competition. We never want people to feel othered or, or left out or excluded. But when people want to choose to participate in a gamification or a little friendly competition, we want to make sure it's light and fun for everyone and builds teamwork instead of isolating folks. And really type tap into that uh, kind of sense of cooperation for higher engagement team building throughout your agency. And thirdly, how to plan. Um, a gamification campaign or rollout or adjusting a program to have more gamification and fun in it. And uh, if you don't feel like doing that yourself or, hey, who's got the bandwidth and, and has the time to do that, there's actually, I've had huge success getting skilled volunteers who sometimes actually work for gaming companies um, and are absolute already experts in that. But you can get folks who are interested in this to kind of do a little committee and set, help set up and lead and be empowered to take on that program themselves as volunteers. So as we uh, roll right along, thank you. And again, games are, this is goes back as far as human culture goes back in the world and they're an undeniable part of society they're a vital part of society and connecting with each other and whether you're part of a competitive esports fantasy football team or you just love the sound of shuffling cards or you play monopoly or other board games uh, settlers of Catan or DD, uh, the act of participating in a game is something that's pretty universal uh, so that's why it's kind of easy and fun to tap into as a really great engagement uh, approach. When we tell you about in the session can be applied in extremely simple and practical ways. Todd likes to visit the dollar store for inspiration. Uh, or oh, there's so much there. There's so much there. I'm afraid to go to a dollar <laughs> store. I'm going to spend way more than a dollar. Uh, and it can also be kind of woven into your whole strategic plan for your agency. It could be it ideally is aligned with your mission and much more complex. And you can use technology, but you don't have to use technology. So this is just a super flexible way to up your community engagement. And Todd uh, and his kids have a great practical example of how to use this in real life. 
All right. So as Dana's kind of been alluding to, this isn't just about tactical things that you could do. It's about gaining inspiration, like when I go to the dollar store or whatever, and it's about a mindset. So we have to start with your environment. And this is something that I did for my kids. You can see the trampoline that I put up and what I call the gamification control center over on the left-hand side. And our volunteer, as you can see, jumping in the middle. Bing! Um, but I wanted my kids to jump a lot more and be a lot more fun. Lisa, can you advance, please? Next slide. Do, 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 do. Ooh, okay. that close up on the control center. Nice. Yes. All right. So um, I decided to add some elements to the experience and give them control. Control is very important. So as you can see here, they can now activate strobe lights, a bubble machine, fan control, a spray nozzle, a shower, um, and other things, as you can see there. And it's a lot of fun. Oh, it's a misting system. Yeah, that's what that is. And I even added in the years since I took this photograph, a canopy over the top with disco lights. So at nighttime, they get the fog, the disco lights, the fan, the bubbles all at the same time. And of course, there's, you know, uh, strobe lights and, and it's just a blast. I've got some really cool videos I could send you. But the concept here worked, okay? Suddenly, instead of spending a few minutes out there jumping on the trampoline, because, hey, it's fun to jump, they spend hours. And of course, it improves their health, it improves their, um, their psychology, you know, it's just fun. And I noticed that what they spent, what, what was propelling them spending more time was the control center, being able to go back and forth and to change their environment. So the question is, is, how do we apply, obviously, all of this to volunteerism? So let's move on. Bing. Now I make the bing sound? Okay, all right. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'm just binging. Maybe I'm just bonkers. I don't know. Um, but as yeah, they kind of went from that one-dimensional experience, as I mentioned, to this multi-dimensional, multi-sense immersion experience, and they had a lot of fun. Next slide, please, Lisa. I kind of move on. By watching them, I learned that, as I said, it was as much about the control as anything else. And we want to look for ways to engage and influence people um, positively that way. Now, normally I would be, let's see, we've got another poll for you. Um, yeah, usually, I mean, as such as you are able, jumping on trampolines is pretty darn fun. So I think that, yeah, that, might, be, that might be close to 100%, you know, unless someone's like actively trying to drink their, their cup of coffee right now. <laughs> and so, as, as, yeah, as Lisa put in the chat, if Slido isn't working for you, it's fine. It's a, it's a new little app we're plugging in here. Uh, you can always answer in the chat uh, as we go along. Last week, we asked the question, hey, everybody, what do you think of Todd's hat? Because we were trying to go into the next section of our presentation, which is about, all right, um, what can you do to start applying some of these concepts? And this week, we don't can't see my hat because the video is not working. So I'm going to ask, <laughs> what makes you laugh out loud? And just type up whatever you want. Please go to that Slido in the lower right hand corner. You know, one or two words, what really makes friends great, you know, comedians, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, you know, I've seen some pretty fun answers to this kind of a question. So um, because it, we want you thinking about those kids, friends. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, Yay. for who's, who's responding. We love it. Giggling cat videos. Yes, <laughs> always, always. with the <laughs> Always with the cat videos. And Always. I'm going to say that we've got a couple of responses in the chat. Comedians, yep. Hulu, yep. Abbott Elementary, my family. Uh, yeah, those are, yeah, family can be pretty, pretty goofy, Linda and Lee. Yeah, that's a great show uh, in Abbott Elementary. Excellent. Well, let's learn it, how to apply gamification and funification directly to your program. So with advances in technology now allowing many aspects of our lives to become infused with gaming elephants, elements and elephants, elements, um, our motivation- I like elephants. Play, I, yeah, I think gaming elephants is, is another yeah. good thing to add I in. can imagine them on uh, my trampoline. <laughs> it is. Well, what that motivates us um, for playing and becoming a more important and relevant part of who we are is again, especially in crisis and tough times, keeping that sense of humor or joy or fun. Uh, and it's really good for you physically and mentally to try to smile, to have something have you smile or laugh every day. And that's even better if you're working with your team of volunteers and they're really enjoying these kind of team building uh, ideas that we roll into. Thank you, Lisa, for next slide. And this really all comes down to 
what this does for the agency, and this kind of helps you make the case if you need to convince uh, your boss or anybody else or people on your team that it really just builds brand awareness and awareness of the agency's mission. It helps with fundraising and having a fun part of a connection to the agency for members of the community, whether they're volunteers and volunteers are very often a heavily overlap into the circle of donors. You want advocates, uh, you want people who are supporters and sharing your message, even if they're not volunteering. But we know that the sense of play is a highly motivating factor and it creates a kind of a, a loyalty to your agency to have that connection to feel involved. And it improves the retention of volunteers and staff and employees, paid employees that are participating. And we're at the point where big corporations are spending millions and billions of dollars to integrate elements of play into their workflows and operations and community relationships. And we can do even more with volunteerism because the people we work with have already demonstrated how much they want to be present and engage by showing up. And this, again, just increases that sense of we're in this together, we're, we're having a fun collaboration. And that sense of fun, again, is really important if you're going through any challenging or crisis times, have that sense of we're in this together. And I love what's up on that slide. Um, by the way, this is the, we have two different sets of steps that we're going to walk you through today. Yep. This one is yep. about the environment. The next one is going to be about the science of gamification. Yes, there is a science to fun. Uh, <laughs> so this is about <laughs> this is about how to establish your environment. And then can we move on to the next slide? Slide, slide, scene, thing, Hello. whatever. <laughs> it's, it's, bing. All right. Um, but notice that on that step one, there is all of that background stuff. You know, do you have a goofy um, background? Do you have your solid decor? Things that will make other people laugh or at least chuckle or smile when they walk into the volunteer office automatically puts them into a good mood. Um, Lisa, can you please advance? To the Cats versus dogs. The okay. classic dilemma. The classic. All right. Thank you. All right. So one of the things that you could do, and the reason why I have a cat versus dog thing up here, is that you can kind of get a competitive sense moving inside of your volunteers. It might even be by saying, hey, who's a cat person and who's a dog person and dividing them up into teams who compete with each other. Um, in the classic example that I use all the time, there is an animal shelter. And at the animal shelter, they have to clean kennels. And it's a question, of course, is who has as the cleanest kennels, the cats or the dogs. And you might think that, that would be obvious, but it's really not. Okay, cats do drop an awful lot of hair. And so it turns into this competition as to you know who can do the most work and it's fun. And all you have to do in order to track it is get a piece of poster board and put a chart up on it, kind of like the one that you see up here. You know, and across the top you might have dates and down the side you might have you know cats versus dogs or other teams, or you can reverse that, whatever works for you. And and either way, you're tracking on a day-by-day -day basis who's winning, the cats or the dogs. And we call that a challenge board. You could, if there was some more um, measurement going on, you could call it a leaderboard. Like if there was a way to measure exact performance and who's the leader, you know, and getting the most points or the highest score or the most of whatever, then that would be a leaderboard. So those are just some things that I wanted to talk about really fast. Um, finish though, let's say that the right mindset that I'm looking for was best exemplified by somebody that I was consulting with many years ago who was a volunteer manager and she came to me and she says, would my volunteer agreement be any less legally binding if I printed it out on pink paper with a kid's font? And I said, well, no, it's still a legal document if they sign it. She goes, great, I'm going to do that. I don't know if she ever did, but that's what we're looking for is ways to take existing things that are already a part of their lives, the office, paperwork, um, poster boards, whatever, existing, you know, relationships they have with them and just make them fun, um, cheaply if possible. So yeah, this doesn't this have to, another impede, this doesn't have to impact your budget. It can, if you want it to, but it doesn't have to. Great. So yeah, thanks Lisa. So this game creating process is the same as when my kids, as we shot, were put in control, as we saw earlier of their trampoline experience. Suddenly they are the leaders as well as the participants and they are in control of their environment. And so it's just about, yeah, changing that psychology, helping them to communicate and even collaborate on goals like 
cleaning those kennels. Yeah. And so Dana and I made a separate presentation actually on a related subject to all of this called care circles of how do you get a group of now motivated people, possibly even competing with each other to compete, to wrap their lives and their service around a person or a cause that you endorse or that your healthcare organization serves. And that's a whole different thing, but it's the same kind of, um, mindset change you know are we coming here to do a job or are we coming to our volunteer experience to have fun smile a lot and serve people and that's just a whole different mindset so that's gamification um, yeah and, and uh, if we go to the next slide lisa that idea of having people empowered to share in the leadership of how this goes and particularly sharing goals this happens whether it's with your program or not with your program people are already around the world spontaneously organizing themselves to solve problems in their communities and we saw this particularly take off and expand of course in the pandemic in 2020 and that's still continuing at least 70 percent of volunteering around the world at any given time is informal it's not connected to an agency or a program it's people spontaneously seeing that a problem has to be solved and they can come together uh, in person or online to solve that problem and have that common goal that happens uh, most frequently and most easily recognized as mutual aid, but it happens in all kinds of informal ways. It could be a couple of families deciding to go pick up trash at the park that weekend. No one's asking them to, they're just deciding to do that. So that's something to keep in mind that this is already occurring and you don't have to invent things from scratch, from the bottom up, but we're gonna give you these ways to incorporate it into your programs, but there's lots of inspiration from informal volunteering that develops gamification on its own. And my favorite examples on the next slide, Lisa, Lisa's driving behind the scenes, so thank you. Go, Lisa. Hashtag trash challenge. If you go onto Twitter or Instagram and just type in hashtag trash challenge like this, uh, you will find millions and millions and millions of results. And it started with uh, some teenagers wanting to clean up a school in Ukraine in 2019 and teenagers being teenagers with smartphones. They took pictures and they had a, their old friends. They had a friendly competition of who could pick up more bags of trash in a good before and after pictures. And that and did hashtag trash challenge. They just decided to do that. And that was such um, an easy, adaptable idea that people around the world instantly within six months, millions and millions and millions of people, mostly informal, and then some organizations hopped onto that trend. And it's a, my favorite example of gamification because anybody can do it. It crosses culture barriers, it crosses languages, and it's just can be, I'm participating with a hashtag. I don't have to sign up uh, with a beach cleanup organizations, coastal cleanup, Foundation. However, nonprofits and non government organizations and even government agencies noticed hey, this kind of overlaps into our conservation work, and we should absolutely jump on this trend and make it part of our formal volunteering. And those teenagers later that year form, did form their own nonprofit uh, website. So if you go to you know, trashchallenge.org, the website's still up, so that's an, a, a way. Whoa, 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 can... Dana! Are you telling me there's an entire NGO formed by teenagers to take out the trash? I mean, yes. serious? Yes. Yeah, they <laughs> won't do it in their own home, but they'll do it out in the park, <laughs> the park and the beach. And, I know. And if I understand correctly, it's just because they started challenging each other. That's the power of gamification. Exactly. So if you're having trouble getting your teenagers to take out the trash, it's just because it's not fun enough. They'll do make it. it. A competition. Okay. Make it a competition. You got to make it a competition. Exactly. <laughs> and um, at least if we go to the next slide, in gamification is in our lives every day. The um, oh. Yeah, so, and Ali, we will talk about goofy awards for volunteers in that selection process where we will, we'll circle back to that. We want to cover a couple of other things first, but I absolutely see and hear your question. Um, if you've, if you've been brushing up on any language skills with, for example, Duolingo, I've been brushing up on my Spanish the last few months. Gamification is everywhere in e-learning. So if your organization has any for volunteers or um, employee training or community information, if you're using any kind of e-learning platform uh, along with your volunteer management software system, then you're already probably using gamification with badges and levels and experience points and, and things like that. So it, it, this is a way to start to recognize you're going to start to see gamification in many, many more 
real life instances uh, and you'll start to notice that it really is woven into everything we do. So Todd's going to get into kind of our gamification toolbox okay. and how okay. it builds engagement and learning and challenges. And Ali, this will start to get to your point, but we are going to get specific on how to incorporate these things in or have volunteers help you. Go ahead, Todd. Hey, I'll just answer Ali's question, you know, my way right up front. Yeah. I go to the dollar store. <laughs> so That's true. He does. You want to find really goofy does. awards, you don't have a budget, you go to the dollar store. I had a couple actually that I was going to show, but my video isn't working today. But yeah, you know, little, it just doesn't even matter because the point is not some fancy award that makes them feel all special. The point is a moment of of fun, okay, oh. you know, to make them smile. And it, it's fine if it's cheap. <laughs> Because at the point, at this point, it's fine. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So we promised earlier that we would get into a little bit more of the science. Um, there's a whole bunch of different things in our toolkit here. We're going to walk through them kind of quickly. You can take notes on the ones that make sense to you. And as we go, we are going to talk a little bit more, Allie, about uh, the recognition process mm -hmm. and when you can hand out the silly awards that you bought at the dollar store or wherever. So let's just kind of, Dana, do you want to take off here? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, and so if we go engagement. to, yeah, so if Next we, slide. thanks, Lisa. We're making Lisa backseat drive. <laughs> That's how I'm doing it. Lisa. Um, so I also want to talk about how we define engagement in our sector and our work is different than how it's engaged. If you look up articles about gamification, they're going to talk about the tech uh, definition, which is quantity of players, hours of play, eyeballs on ads, clicks, 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 like we talked about in community connections. What we're hoping to actually build with these, these moments of fun and sense of teamwork or friendly competition or, or going towards a goal together is a quality relationship building. So it's great if it increases the quantity of people that you're engaged with, that's fantastic. But what we're using this uh, engagement definition as is that quality relationship building and and that's what really uh, creates that retention and keeping talent and also developing volunteers into leading programs like this on their own. So and, I'm going to talk a little, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, 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 you weren't yeah. finished. Yeah, you. yeah, I was just introducing you. So, per, so speaking of psychic moments, it's perfect. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So the next couple of steps in our, or things in our toolkit, I want to talk about what a definition of a game really is. Okay. Because people get confused by this. They're thinking board games. They're thinking Parker Brothers. They're thinking, you know, Uno. All right. And it really, that's not what we're talking about. Think about that, that trash challenge. We're talking about a mindset. Okay. So it's really anything that engages two or more people with one another for a purpose and it must involve fun. Good games start with some practice, like those kids out on the beach started spontaneously picking up trash and having fun, and then they slowly spread it, okay? But that helps people to kind of learn the rules. And when you first attempt to get gamification working in your programs, it, there's going to be some confusion. There might be some strange looks. There's almost certainly going to be managers who are skeptical of your sanity, and you might feel a sense of awkwardness. And you know what? We get that. Please don't let it discourage you. In time, people will rise to the level of the challenge you are throwing out naturally because it's a part of us to just laugh and have fun. And they'll start engaging spontaneously and organically. They'll even come in with crazy ideas like, uh, I don't even want to get into them because we don't have time, but crazy ideas. But when they get into that gaming mindset, they'll start looking forward to coming in, learning new skills, participating with improvements, challenging other people to do the same. And it just kind of takes off on its own because it's so natural to socialize. And so, um, yeah, just don't, don't be afraid, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Next, it, for... yep. thanks, Lisa, for advancing that slide. And oh, yeah, a, an important part is, and in video games, you build skill that's specific to the game. In volunteer engagement, they're building skills that are specific to your programs and probably the rest of, of their lives as a benefit to, again, the whole team and that kind of mental and physical health of uh, volunteering benefits that we know exist. And a big part of that motivation to continuing any game or participating is that increase in skill sets, that kind of feeling of leveling up or learning something new. And when you're gamifying volunteer roles, these skills do have these real world applications for career paths, education, uh, the foundation being good old fashioned fun. And specifically with, with Todd's kids, more time on the trampoline equals greater athleticism, skills, balance, health, 
uh, overall. And again, just the good endorphins of smiling and having fun with it. Um, and we're back to cats and dogs competition. If we go to the okay, slide, so the, yep, uh, yeah, next slide. There we go. Back to our cats and dogs. I keep. I love this one. All right. <laughs> I want to pick gamble. up a little bit on where Dana was talking about a little bit of uh, video games and the ways that people gather points or they could pick little badges up. I mean, electronic badges. It could be physical badges. Um, it could be you know points on a on a flight poster board, right? Okay, it doesn't really matter. Those are classic ways of doing what in gamification is called leveling up. All right, so you're progressing towards, you know, proving that the cats are better than the dogs and the cats are better than the dogs, by the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> did I just make some fur fly? Um, so I wanna talk a little bit about how this works with the recognitions that you're already doing. We do not wanna get away or get rid of the existing recognition programs that you have. Those have their place. That just doesn't happen to be today's topic. But let's say that there's an annual gala going on and it's the one you've been having for years and years and it, it should continue to go. What we are actually talking about is what happens in the lobby before the gala begins, where the cat teams and the dog teams are gathering probably with one another because they serve together and they're talking. And one of the cat leaders walks up to one of the dog leaders and says, <laughs> oh, yeah, we won, we won this year, game on for next year. And the dog says, Oh yeah, better believe it. Okay, we are gonna so own next year. All right, and they're smiling and they're happy and they haven't even walked in to sit down for dinner yet and they're in a great mood. That's the gamification. You know, they're leveling up on their own, by challenging each other on their own. And it's amazing what happens. I mean, imagine what happens with these guys and the impact that they are having with these guys on the budget at the animal shelter. It no longer is quite so labor intensive for cleaning kennels. Um, so there's just benefits all the way around. Back to you. Yeah, yeah and I thank so. you, Todd. And I want to specifically um, answer some of my answers to Ali's question is when I was working for a conservation agency years ago, we had a goofy certificate. So people got, you know, real rewards and things like that. And we did every day recognition is important of there's always an opportunity. Smiles are free. Thank yous are free. Every interaction with a volunteer is, you know, a chance to make them feel welcome and that they belong or to, to alienate them or ruffle some feathers. So we hopefully want to uh, have people feel welcome and belong. But my favorite was like Yeti of the year. The mountain goat award for someone who you know hiked hiked the most in trail patrol so we had a um you know superstar uh superhero awards or someone went above and beyond but we would think of something that was uh specific to the person we wanted to recognize so the recognition was serious um but everyone was having fun with the certificates and keeping it um somewhat you know personalized and tasteful but uh really goofy and so if someone was like i got yeti of the year three years in a row because i hiked the most miles of trail patrol that was something that was kind of fun for people or two or three people might be fighting fighting over the yeti of the year award for how much they did trail patrol so those are just some of the goofy ideas in addition to the zoo's good egg award since my background's in conservation that's the kind of stuff that we were doing is goofy uh, and fun awards and having people very playfully uh doing the same job doing a job together but feeling a little competitive with it and if we go to the next slide we hear about organizational productivity don't bring the house. Don't don't bring the mood down, Todd. Don't bring the mood. Down. Okay, that to avoid bringing the mood down, I just threw a slide up there for the fun. Um, are cats superior to dogs? Obviously, Ooh. yes. And are you kidding? No way. Just well, let us know while I try to talk about something. Well, uh, yeah, a little yeah. bit, a little bit more boring. Okay, so if you are not already collaborating, this is how organizational productivity okay. goes. If you, you are not with, already start collaborating, with goals. yeah. So we, <laughs> yeah, so start with shared goals, and then Lisa, if we go to organizational productivity. Thank you. Yeah. If you're not already collaborating with your like HR department, your development team, other departments to get ideas from them on gamification strategies, we strongly recommend it. Um, the more you can get that going across, you know, not just service, but donating dollars, okay? Um, it's the, the better your capacity is, the efficiency is, organizational productivity goes up. And if you have any questions about any of that and how to make it work, hey, give us a call. And what do you mean dogs are superior to cats? Okay, game <laughs> on, folks. 
I need my cat people here. Um, <laughs> next slide, Dana, please. Or Lisa, I keep saying Dana for slides. I don't, you know, I don't know. About it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And I'm answering Ali's question in the chat that like, this isn't only for, this is kind of speaks to work and play balance. This isn't only for younger volunteers or people who already like video games. Again, play playing games is, is universal. My father-in-law um, loves cribbage. I can't play cribbage to save my, my life. You know, people might uh, enjoy card games or board games or fam family game nights, things like that. And I also have, have friends who are a generation or two above me who do enjoy uh, learning a new language and the gamification of like an e-learning thing, or they are getting into certain kinds of video games. So don't let the age and assumptions and when in doubt, ask people how they want to balance that, that sense of work and play, because again, not and allow the grace uh, that not everyone may want to do this, and that's okay. So the idea of gamification, again, is not that we're creating the cool kids table in the cafeteria uh, and excluding people, but the relationships between how we work together and playing with others um, are, you know, there's a lot of room for engagement in that. And we want to see when we're viewing a volunteer as a player in an environment, that's beneficial to the engagement for the whole program. And again, that agency brand awareness. And if someone's not, everyone's going to be into it and they shouldn't be punished or felt to be excluded. So allow room for different levels of participation while you're maintaining that consistent and fair recognition of the entire team paid and unpaid and all of their individual accomplishments. This is just a way to add a layer of engagement and fun to it for folks who want to participate. Right, so next slide, please, Lisa. I don't know if we have time. Maybe you can click the play button, but this is my kids actually playing on the <laughs> trampoline. You can see them with the bubbles. Um, but to the point that Dana was just making and watching this, um, I will tell you, although we don't have videos of it, that as you might imagine, half the neighborhood jumps on this trampoline all the time, okay? I mean, it just grabbed people and pulled them in. And that's the team stuff that Dana was just referring to. Um, let's move on, Lisa. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know, wondering in the chat, when to include playing games and shall we include the volunteers and the choices? Absolutely include the volunteers and the choices. Um, do a survey, have an open discussion, email thread, have a little virtual or in person town hall. If you have certain social events or meetings already set up with your volunteers or different teams, um, talk about this. And part of what we're going to get into in a moment is, hey, not only is this already happening, you're just, you know, you're learning new things and getting caught up with it. It's never too early and it's never too late to start to incorporate gamification into your programs and having volunteers themselves directly involved with um, a steering committee, a little group, formal or informal is absolutely key because then they can help identify their shared goals together. And that also is um, going to automatically create much more buy in and enthusiasm if people are uh, a part of creating something together versus someone telling them, hey, this is happening and you can do it or not do it. And, you know, which one's going to be more exciting and feel more empowering to participate with us? Oh, I get to help come up with the ideas of how we do this. That's great. I'm not under pressure to do so, but I, but I feel like I'm involved in the process. So hopefully that um, answers that question in chat. And we do have uh, one more Slido. And we can't really do that Slido because it's about Todd's hat. So we're going to jump ahead. No, no, no. I, I, I actually created an alternative about oh, how did. many people okay. want to jump on my, I'll, I'll jump on the trampoline right now. But my reason for doing that isn't because I really care about my trampoline. It's because part of doing this gamification thing right is every so often periodically evaluating from you know, in a casual way like this, how well is the gamification process going? Well, I'm essentially asking you folks right now, are you enjoying this presentation? Are you watching things like the trampoline and listening to us? And, you know, if so, do you want to get involved? Do you want to get engaged? Do you want to jump on my trampoline? You know, this is just a fun way of, of seeing where you're at. So if you'd have a second, you can reply to that. Either way, we're moving on. So <laughs> Into yeah. the chat. Yeah. The, and we want to get okay. to um, that this all the the point and foundation of this is just maximizing your people power. So we already know that your volunteers are a crucial part of the mission, not only doing crucial tasks and roles in the work themselves, but also these are your best advertisements, your best recruitment tool 
uh, for uh, more volunteers and more donors and more advocates and supporters in the community is someone who is really passionate about the mission. And this is how we really leverage this people power is tying these threads together of personnel management and leadership practices with gamification that, again, all kinds of agencies and government and businesses uh, are using to embed the values or the mission and the purpose uh, and kind of weave that in with personal development, that skills section that we were talking about, and coaching and recognition. So with a competitive and engaging nature of gamification, that helps people not be in silos. That helps maybe improve communication overall and using gamification to innovate or just add to and pump up your programs and inviting collaboration, not just with the volunteers that we were just talking about, but across other departments, that looks good for you in your professional development. You're now innovative and you're an innovative leader in your organization to come up with these ideas. So that's gonna get um, positive attention for your own career recognition. And if your agency culture is very siloed, incorporating gamification and reaching out and doing these interdepartment competitions, that can be a great way to kind of break down those barriers and shift to a more cooperative company culture. And so again, it's a win-win all around. All right, but Dana, I'm getting scared here. I got to admit it. I'm, I'm scaring 50s. Todd. I'm, I, you're scaring me. All right, you know, and I have to admit in my 50s, I am just a little bit technophobic. Okay, you know, and everything it seems like you're talking about in the younger generations, all this will be happening on phones. And I'm worried. You don't <laughs> How have do to deal with technophobia. Let me, let me ease your fears, Todd. So oh, thank you. There, there can be, there's always going to be somebody, and again, doesn't have to be attached to cert, certain, you know, Gen X or older or younger generations. We don't want to, um, we don't want to necessarily make those assumptions, but we want to meet people where they are. So again, it's how much do they want to participate? How comfortable are they with it? And if you directly have to address someone, even if it's your own supervisor or boss or a higher decision maker who's technophobic um, or they're, you want to address other barriers to using gamification as a strategy. We don't have to use technology, but that's there's a lot of of apps and things. Um, and even within your recognition, you can make it, you use tech plugins or just cards and goofy certificates and things like that. But you can address this by, again, you don't have to do it yourself. Um, if no one in your agency, if no paid staff feel comfortable taking this on, let's get a volunteer committee together. This is a huge area of expertise uh, around the country and gamification designing a gamification campaign can be done with your current volunteers ideally uh, it can be in person it can be remote but these are ideas and you don't have to understand it yourself or know exactly how to do it for you to find qualified volunteers who are happy to take on designing gamification the things you have and again those might even be new people that are here near where I am uh, in Silicon Valley in high tech. And they're like, oh, this is a great remote, easy, flexible volunteer thing where I can be part of this virtual committee that helps this organization in Missouri along with their local volunteers who are interested in this. So this helps kind of expand your thinking, not just with who are your current volunteers, but if you want to recruit uh, specifically to the skill, this is how you do it. In a few I love like what Linda put in to, in text or in chat a little while ago when she goes around apparently to all of her volunteers and just asks them if she's going around on her rounds. Hey, are you still having fun? Mm -hmm. And that's great. You know, everybody loves that. Loves that. You know, one thing that you could do, Linda, to build on that and start turning it into more of a game would be to just put a, again that piece of poster board costs all of a dollar and just write down the names of somebody who seemed to be having the most fun and say Linda or let's say it's Jane is having fun today and that's all you put up there. You know, or you could put up another one that says, hey, are you having fun today? And put a marker next to it, you know, mm -hmm. or what made you happy today? And put a marker next to it and just watch as it fills up. I do that with quote boards. I do it with my kids and quote boards, actually. Somebody says something funny. Mm -hmm. I've got yep. a place where you can put it up there. It. All of that is gamification. All of that is engaging people and helping them to smile and do it while they are serving. So I want to build now a little bit on what Dana was just talking about, how to recruit people. You think that you might have to find highly skilled people, but you don't necessarily do so. We found that some of the most creative minds um, are right in there with you and 
and you might even have two or three of our favorite people. They're like Dana, who are <laughs> thespians, all right? The ones who Acting. love to get up on stage, right? Famous. The ones who love to perform. Yes, they're yes. singers. They're <laughs> dancers. You know, these people are automatically in the entertainment world. They're in the entertainment mindset, and that's what we're after. We want those kind of people, um, people who are motiv motivational speakers. Frankly, faith-based people are generally really good, especially faith-based leadership, the type who love to get up in front, you know, and to speak to people. Um, and then you pair them up with tech folks, okay? Just a little bit, of, especially if you've got a younger generation you're trying to engage um, and see what happens. Um, and so, yeah, but anybody who's really good at connecting with other people is a natural leader for gamification processes. Give them marching orders or a challenge, a challenge, mm -hmm. and let them go. And let them go. And um, next slide, please, Lisa. Please, Lisa. Thanks for driving, Lisa, today. And so, where you find folks like this? And Lisa had a you had a great comment. I want to recognize too that this again. There, this is a whole career path for folks at, at different ages. So whether someone's like, no, oh, they've retired from working one kind of job, but they're really interested in game theory and they're going back to school. So you can get full degrees, you can get certificates. So a wonderful place to look for volunteers. Again, they don't even have to be in your local area is not just your current talent pool, because I bet you'll be surprised how many people either are super interested in this or already in this industry as their jobby job during the day uh, when they're not volunteering. Um, but tech companies, corporate partners, CSR teams can be leaders uh, and again, part of the committee designing this. Your online community, expand the search um, out to social media, uh, you, your local or online university, IT, computer science, game design track. And again, this can be done rem as much remotely or in person or a hybrid blend. Um, and this is a very easy and accessible way for people to participate that might be outside of either their normal roles or or you get volunteers that are specific to this special project of helping you uh, use gamification and put a gamification element into all of your programs. That can be its own special project that folks are in charge of, again, in person or remotely. It really can be uh, just that easy when you know where to, where to target your marketing and look for that. And as we go into the how to do this as well, and the next one, thank you so much. Oh, well, we've kind of been talking about it, you know, you yeah, want to find the right already, people, yeah. you want to, you know, go, and so, I mean, I think we've kind of addressed this and then we should probably just kind of move on a little bit here. We're kind of coming down to the end. We'd love to give you guys a few minutes to ask us some questions about how to get this going. Um, so, Dana, what is really? the center of all of this? Well, I think the center of gamification is always people, 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 and the point is to have fun. The gamification tools that you use, again, they can be simple, analog, low tech, complex, practical, but if it's fun and human centered and that social connection um, is there, then that's where you're going to get success. So we wanna make sure that, because if you, if you go to a search engine and you uh, gamification for engagement, you're gonna get so many results that we wanna make sure you're not distracted by just the newest or shiniest things. Um, but some of the best games are the oldest in civilization, marbles, dice, checkers, chess, cards. The elements of learning and overcoming challenges together is the most important part of the experience. So again, that element of learning and overcoming challenges together is the most important part of the experience that's centered in fun and playful competition. And really, so yeah. Yeah, to sum it all up in the last slide there. Um, yes, the recording will be uh, shared with participants. Um, and again, game is on and we wanna, if you have to bop to something else, we understand, but if you have some questions, you can put them in chat or you can raise your hand and unmic and we're happy to brainstorm with you or answer any questions that you might have. And at the same time, I'm throwing one last Slido up there. If you have any feedback about the presentation, just throw it up there. It's anonymous. <laughs> so, I'll mention yeah. to kick you off, guys, that yeah. um, I teach at a local college as an adjunct. And one of the things I do is that I downloaded a free Jeopardy game mm. online. And every mm. week I start class with a Jeopardy game that reviews what we did the past few weeks. 
So it's a great way to review with people, but they're still having fun. And that's something that could be used when you do your volunteer orientations. You could end an orientation with a Jeopardy game or, or Family Feud or something like that. It just makes it a little bit more fun. Exactly. Now, the, anything that you could do like that, Lisa, that's an excellent, excellent example, you know, just to make it more fun. The same things only in a more fun way. It's another way of summing all this up. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of grabbing random objects again at the dollar store, okay, and just <laughs> setting them, you know, without any explanation whatsoever. Just put it on your desk, you know, or put it wherever volunteers are going to see it the most. And if it's bizarre, they're going to ask questions and you just look at them and you can answer it however you want, or you can get them to describe why it's there or put it up on a poster board again. I'm really keen on that poster board. I haven't noticed because <laughs> right? it's cheap and it's easy and it's fun and people watch it. So um, anything that you could do like that. So random objects or, you know, games like what Lisa mentioned, anything that you could think of, be outside the box, be crazy, have fun with it and you've succeeded. Exactly. And again, if you're if you're thinking this this sounds fun but overwhelming, get volunteers to do it. People are very excited to do projects like this. And sometimes it might even be that it's an internship project for someone who is studying gamification or game design and they get some school credits for working with your agency. It can be, you know, beneficial across the board for again the brand awareness and just keeping it people centered, keeping folks involved in what they're sharing uh, together building those skills, getting towards those goals at the same time, and really having this idea that we're um, uh, in, in this together in a playful and friendly way that builds camaraderie rather than um, having anyone feel excluded. And Linda has another great uh, comment in the chat. She does crazy decorations in the office and the volunteers can't wait to see comes next. And th I think that's, oh, that's great awesome, to Todd's Linda. point of, we're sparking yes. curiosity. So play mm -hmm. and, and curiosity and games and then gamification, all of that is tied together. So we're sparking creativity, we're sparking curiosity, and that automatically is building engagement and having people lean in and pay more attention to um, how this is all working. And that really just does help if it feels like sometimes the mission, depending on what the tasks are, is, you know, can be repetitive or monotonous, or there isn't naturally a lot of creativity or, or change of routine. This is a fun way to kind of um, mix it up a little bit and get people even more enthused and even more connected to the agency. And I, I apologize, folks. Apparently the feedback is not anonymous. I thought that it was, but Lisa, thank you for your, <laughs> Lisa Austin, thank you for your, your, your compliment. So you can only say nice things, okay, here, if you have anything <laughs> else, then I don't know what to tell you. And if you're a dog person, I don't want to hear it anyway. <laughs> so, ooh, does that, ooh, did I just ruffle more feathers from I fur? think I think you did, uh, uh, yeah. Okay. And Lisa's Dang, talking what are you guys about... going to do about it? Game on, people. Game on, game on, dogs versus cats. And super volunteer, uh, like t-shirts, hats, pins, like we're used to kind of like the tchotchkes or the objects. And this can be uh, this can be that in low tech or it can be more abstract where you do have badges and levels and leaderboards. And again, a lot of social media is already doing this, you know, um, uh, Instagram has you know, not just likes and shares and things like that, but you can get, you know, oh, you're most engaged with, you know, you're going to get a badge in this group in this LinkedIn group because of how much you're engaged and how much you're answering threads. So again, this is already woven into life. There's just these um, different ways as we're sharing today to just begin the idea of incorporating it into your programs. And again, this is uh, recorded. It's a resource. We'll put some other resources that um, we think are helpful with incorporating gamification into your work a little bit more and into your teams on the Visas Voices page. And uh, sometimes there's uh, other ways that we want to hear from you. So if you have other ideas that you haven't put in the chat today and you think of them later and we want to hear down the line, oh, we've started to use these uh, ideas ourselves and here's how it's working, let us know. You can email Todd, you can email me, you can email your local Visas rep and they'll get in touch with us if you have any follow-up questions and we also want to hear your your gamification and playful success stories um hey and, dana yeah deanna i was going to say there's something in visas that can help us do this and i think lisa you and todd can answer that as well i was going to say there's a couple things first yeah. of all in the kiosk now when people check out there's the ability to select a smiley face or a sad face or there's i think five different choices 
to indicate how your volunteer experience was that day. And that's just a great way for a volunteer manager to get a feel for how volunteer tasks are going and if there's concerns in any certain areas. But it's a great way to be able to say, hey, this group had the most smiley faces. They're, they're the fun place to be, mm -hmm. um, which is nice too. But also in Visas, you can automate your awards mm -hmm. and then customize your award letters that go out so that you may say, you know, you may have some, you know, fun little silly type awards that Visas is calculating for you and the automatic notifications get sent out and also let you know just so that you know. Obviously, the cats are winning this week, and everybody needs to know about that, right? <laughs> so, yeah. it in the email kiosk so. messages. That would be a great mm -hmm. kiosk message, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. see Linda saying that they already do that and have special messages for anything that's you cool, like, you know, today is the who pets the most cats day or who, you know, I don't know. I'm just making up crazy things now. Um, I don't know. Our, our badges are somewhere somewhat built in, but not quite. We're going to have to poke a stick at that one, aren't we, Todd? Yep, I've already got the stick. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah so that's in development as well. And so that's that's part of the tie-in is, again, you can use the technology you have, like uh, Visus One awards. to awards and for recognition mm -hmm. to start to do this. And you can do this outside of technology. Um, and again, my favorite thing is hashtags are free. So if you um, have volunteers taking pictures of themselves doing the work if they're not working with any confidential people or materials, but they can take pictures of themselves doing the work and there's a hashtag to it. There can be a official or unofficial competition of who's posting, who's posting the most or who's shares and likes with a, a specific hashtag that you or your marketing department decides is attached to your volunteer efforts. That's part of uh, the fun as well. And that's exactly how hashtag trash challenge started by accident. Just teenagers, you know, being goofy with each other and sharing stuff online and that can um, build up your brand awareness and maybe you'll even be a viral hit in a good way. That's always a, a fun aim to go for. And again, we'll have all of these up on the Visas Voices resource page. You can reach out to Todd or me directly if you have any questions and we really hope you enjoy our monthly webinars. We enjoy doing these for you. And we will I'll talk to you all next time. And again, we're really easy to reach. So if you have any follow up questions or cool stories to share, absolutely email me or Todd or Lisa or get in touch with your local thesis voices rep and they know how to get in touch with us as well. 